This was supposed to be a quick tip video, but I just spent the last five hours figuring out how to build a custom app in make.com. And I figured I'd show you guys how to do it too, because it sounds like make is going to launch a custom platform where you can buy and sell these custom apps. So I'd say it's probably worth it to learn how. And now that I figured it out, I'm going to show you step by step so that you can create your own custom app in the next five minutes. In this video, we're going to use my buddy Adrian's API for social media scrape. We're going to use the channel videos endpoint to get the latest 30 videos from any YouTube creator. And I'll leave a link to Scrape Creators in the description so you can use that and follow along. But he's going to give you 5,000 credits for free so you can get started without paying anything. So let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is take a look at the documentation and figure out exactly what we need to make this API call happen. So the first thing we need to do is look at the request URL. In this case, it's going to be api.scrapecreators.com slash v1 and then for the specific endpoint, the YouTube slash channel videos. Then we have the query parameters. So you can pass in a handle, channel ID, and a continuation token. Doesn't look like any of these are required, but it says that both of these are optional and you can kind of choose either one. We need to either provide a handle or a channel ID, and then we can optionally include a continuation token, which we're not going to cover in this video. And by the way, if you're familiar with HTTP and make, you might want to switch this from shell to HTTP, just so you can read this a little bit better. So not all APIs require an API key, but this one does. So you can just head back to the scrape creators website and grab your API key from there. But don't let anybody see this. It's super important because this is basically like the password to your account. It's why I blur them all in my videos. But anyway, now that we know what this looks like, let's actually hop into make.com and create a new scenario for ourselves http module we're going to select the make a request module and then we're going to paste in the url from the documentation so we'll grab this right here copy and paste it into make we're going to keep this as a git request and the api header that i i know we need to add is going to be the api key so we'll add that here and i'll fill this in later the next thing we need to do is add the query string so these are the parameters and the specific handle for the channel that we want to scrape we can just scroll down to the query string section we'll type in handle as the key and then for the value we'll just use a random channel name we'll use fireship for this video we want to make sure that parse response is clicked to yes and then we click ok now, if we just right click on this module and we select run this module only, we should get, and we got a 200 response. So we love to see that. If we check the data, we can see that all of the videos have come in properly. And it also gave us the continuation token to scrape the next page. All right, now that we know what the data actually looks like when it comes through our request, let's start creating a custom app. To do that, we're just gonna head over to the more section within this sidebar and click on custom apps. And now we need to create a new app. So just click on this button up here. In this menu, you can make any changes you want. You can change the name, the label, the theme, language, audience, and you can even add a app logo, which will show up on the module if you want to brand it. And by the way, I have a private group called Digital Operations, where I teach people exactly how to build systems just like this, and then sell them to businesses for thousands of dollars. I host weekly calls and I help everybody out one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to check that out, I left a link in the description. So click create new app and you're going to give it a name, but this name can't use any spaces or capital letters. So just keep that in mind. But this is just an identifier for make.com. So you don't really need to worry about it too much. The label is what people are actually going to see. You can also add a theme, a language, an audience, and you can choose an app logo if you want. All right. So made all the changes I wanted to make, and I'm just going to click save. Now you can go and use this module in any scenario you want right now, but I'm going to make a few changes first. Now, all of this JSON might look super complicated, but trust me, the only thing you need to worry about is the base URL and the authorization. So for this example, I'm going to head back to the Scrape Creators API documentation, and I'm going to copy everything from right here on. We'll paste that back into make.com right here, and we'll remove that trailing slash. And now we need to add our API key into this request. And it shows in the documentation that we're going to be using X API key. So I'll just copy this here throw it back into this section or set and we don't need the bearer so we can remove that and it'll just show our API key. So those are literally all the changes you need to make here. Just click save changes and we'll head on over to the connections tab. Now this is where you can configure API connections so you don't have to hardwire your key into every app you build. Just create a new connection, label it whatever you want, and then choose the type going to be API key. Click save and it's going to give you a very similar screen to what we saw before. So I usually just remove all of this stuff unless you're using a more advanced API that requires it. You can leave this sanitized logs here because that as well. Save the changes and head over to the parameters tab. 
in the parameters tab, there's actually nothing that we need to change. I just wanted to show you guys this just in case you wanted to change, you know, the name of your variables or anything like that. But I'm not going to make any changes. So let's head back over to the modules tab and we'll create a new module. And this is where we can select all of the actions that we want to be within our module. So make sure that you select pre-fill with example code. This is going to make your life 10 times easier. So there's six types of actions within a make.com module. You either have action, search, trigger, instant trigger, which is going to be a webhook, responder, which actually has some really cool use cases, as well as universal. You've probably seen universal in the make an API call action in some make module. But for this one, we're just going to go with action. Our connection, we're going to select the test connection that we created earlier or whatever else you named your connection. And I usually just leave module action empty. So give it a name, which can't have any spaces and then a label, which is what people are actually going to see. Then we can add a description, click save, and this module has been created. So the thing that we need to change on this page is going to be the URL address. So let's just delete this for now. We'll head back to our API documentation and we just want to grab the part that we didn't grab earlier. So we'll keep that slash there, um, but anything before V1, we won't use. We'll head back to make.com and paste this in right here. Click save and we should be good to go there. Now, if we head over to the mappable parameter section, here's where we can actually have people input the channel that they want to scrape. It's pretty easy to change this. Just change the name to handle, the type to text, and then the label to profile handle or whatever else you're doing for the automation that you're building. Let's just run through a quick scenario so we can make sure that it works. We're going to head and create a new scenario. In this scenario, we're just going to search for the app we created earlier. For example, you can see Tyler test app is right here. For some reason, that logo is not showing up properly. Make sure that you're using a single color logo and this should work out for you. We'll click on the endpoint that I created earlier called get videos, and we're going to create a connection. You can name this anything you want, and then I'm going to paste in my API key and click save. All right. And now that we made this connection, we can type in any handle we want. So we'll go with Fireship just so that it's the same as before. We can right click on this module, run once. It's going to give us this confirmation. Yes, we want to confirm that we're adding it to our workspace. Click yes, run it again, and you will see we got a 400 error. Awesome. So when we get a 400 error, it means something is wrong with our app. The API call isn't working properly. So we're going to have to go debug and figure out what went wrong. And I have a feeling I know exactly what it is. So if we head back to our custom app section, we'll head back to the modules tab, select the module we created. And then in this section down here, we didn't add those body parameters to the actual request that's being made. So we'll paste these in here. This is just going to be the handle. So this is the, the label that the API is expecting. And then we're going to map the handle parameters from mappable parameters to this specific query string. You can copy and paste exactly what I did here if you're following along. Click Save Changes, and then we'll head back to the scenario. And now you can just head to any YouTube channel, grab their channel ID, paste it into the profile handle section, and then get those videos as well. So. This works great, but nobody else is able to use this. Let's change that real quick. We'll head back to the custom app settings, select our specific app, and then click on the publish button. You're not able to make a public app private again. If you wanna publish it and you're ready to go ahead, just click publish, and it's gonna give you this link that you can copy and share with anybody so that they can add it to their own make scenario. There's honestly a lot of other stuff that you can do with custom apps, but I'm not gonna share it all in this video. So let me know in the comments if you want a part two. I'll share all the advanced features that make custom apps super powerful. And I'd love to see some of you guys in the weekly calls for digital operations, but otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.